We need to say goodbye to Microsoft Copilot Pro because Microsoft 365 Premium has arrived to replace it. But what exactly is Microsoft 365 Premium? What does it offer that Copilot Pro didn't? And what should you do if you're a subscriber of Copilot Pro and you receive this email offering you the opportunity to upgrade? Copilot Pro was initially released in January of 2024 as a combination of Microsoft's response to ChatGPT Plus and a way to access some Microsoft 365 Copilot features for non-business users. It was a somewhat confusing license. It cost $20 per month, just like ChatGPT Plus, and offered additional access to the Microsoft Copilot AI chat product, the Consumer Copilot. But if you had a Microsoft 365 personal or family subscription, in addition to Copilot Pro, it would also add a wide range of Copilot features in apps like Word or PowerPoint. At the time, I did an extensive breakdown of its capabilities. I'll link that video below. But the headline features like custom GPTs and extensive catalog plugins kind of vanished as time went on. Today, when logged into a Copilot Pro enabled subscription, there are some capabilities like Copilot Actions that are available that aren't either with a free Copilot account or an account associated with some sort of Microsoft 365 consumer subscription. But for a while now, the trajectory of Microsoft Copilot largely seems to have been offering a lot of free capabilities rather than focusing on developing Copilot Pro. And in much of that development, either of the free or pro product, Copilot has followed the lead of ChatGPT. However, in the arrival of Microsoft 365 Premium, Microsoft seems to be actively embracing a capability of Copilot Pro. There was just an optional extra with that license based on your base license type. With Microsoft 365 Premium, you get the capability to use Microsoft 365 Copilot features in the consumer apps, plus added access to the chat product. So you could say that we now have a premium tier AI license that's flipped its focus from chat to the productivity enhancing capabilities of Copilot in the Microsoft 365 apps, which to me makes a whole lot more sense as a front line for Microsoft to decide to compete on. So what features are we talking about? Well, first, M365 Premium expands upon the recent inclusion of Copilot agents in Microsoft 365 Consumer, alongside access to the Frontier Program Office agent. Microsoft 365 Premium customers will be able to access the Researcher agent and Analyst. Now, it's important to point out that these agents, just like for Microsoft 365 Commercial, are hosted in Copilot Chat, accessed via the Office Portal, or now called the Microsoft 365 Copilot app. This is distinct from the Microsoft Microsoft Copilot consumer chat experience, and it is this which is the first of several potential points of confusion for this release. There is definitely overlap between the Copilot chat and the Microsoft Copilot experience, but they are distinct with different features, capabilities, and response types. On top of this, you also get access to Copilot in the apps like Word, PowerPoint, and Outlook. However, whereas when Copilot Pro was released, it was clear cut that you needed that upgrade to access these features. Microsoft muddied these waters a little at the end of 2024 or the start of 2025, depending on your usage region, with the inclusion of AI credits in both Microsoft 365 personal and family subscriptions. These offered access to app-based AI features that were previously locked to Copilot Pro, but in a limited consumption-based model offering 60 credits per subscription per month. So now, instead of the conversion of Copilot Pro to Microsoft 365 Premium being the route to get Copilot in the apps, it's now just a route, depending on how much you want to consume. And conceptually, there are different limits for the AI-related services, depending on which tier of the product you choose to use. But really specific details that lead you to understand how many AI credits each specific action actually consumes are, in my view, increasingly hard to track down. Once you jump up to Microsoft 365 Premium, many of those usage limits vanish, but not all. And some of the differences are actually laughably small. Like for example, the access to 15 minutes per day of Copilot Vision versus 10 minutes on personal or family. And there are new features like the Copilot function in Excel that are only available to premium subscribers and therefore aren't linked to a particular number of AI credits, rather they are metered by use. 
But focusing purely on these AI features ignores what is potentially the most significant change. Copilot Pro is a $20 per month license that offers one user access to enhanced AI chat with Copilot. And if that user also happens to have a paid Microsoft 365 consumer subscription, additionally, it gives you access to Copilot in those Office apps. Microsoft 365 Premium is also a $20 per month plan that gives you access to those Copilot Pro AI features alongside up to six users of Microsoft 365, including one terabyte each of OneDrive storage, app installs on up to five machines per user, and all the other features of Microsoft 365 Family. For those already subscribing to Microsoft 365 Family plus Copilot Pro, this new option represents a price drop from $33 per month to $20 per month month for pretty much the same set of features. However, there is another wrinkle here that's potentially confusing too. As part of Microsoft 365 family, the AI credit-based AI features were available only to the account owner, but any user in the family group could add on Copilot Pro at $20 per month to gain access to better Copilot chat and AI capabilities in the Office apps. I doubt there were too many families where a family of four were dropping $80 per month extra for Copilot Pro because they all wanted those extra features, but it was conceivably possible to do this, perhaps in a situation where you have a school-aged child who needs those tools, or a spouse who has a side hustle that benefits from Copilot. But Microsoft 365 Premium is a new base plan that, like Microsoft 365 Family, includes those Copilot Pro features plus some more for the account owner, but still doesn't give those extra AI capabilities to any other user in the group. So whereas it was previously possible to leverage tools like Family Safety across a group and add on Copilot Pro, now the only option is for every user to have their own M365 Premium base license and be the owner of their own family group. From a financial perspective, this doesn't cost any more, but from the perspective of the whole point of Microsoft 365 Family in terms of tools like Family Safety, it's a step back. However, I don't want to overplay this. Family Safety is not a consumer version of Intune or Entra in terms of manageability or sophistication. And even in terms of payments management, I don't think there was ever a way for a family group manager to allocate Copilot Pro licenses to other users without them setting up their own. It does, though, seem like a bit of a missed opportunity. So overall, is Microsoft 365 Premium something to be excited about? Well, I'm actually pretty excited by the fact that it appears that they are recommitting to selling AI services to consumers based primarily on Microsoft 365 integration over focusing on a paid plan for a chat product that more directly competes with ChatGPT. This, in my view, is where Microsoft's strengths lays in this market, and is an affirmation that the initial direction, where the very first demo in the announcement event for Microsoft 365 Copilot was a personal use case. A focus on a consistent tooling of Microsoft 365 Copilot for work, school, and personal activities makes a huge amount of sense. With the future potential for consumer-based agents, Microsoft could leapfrog OpenAI's custom GPTs, and through combining personal and work context in a secure way, Copilot could become the default AI assistant. And last, let's consider that aspect of combining work and personal context together. One of the hidden benefits of getting access to app-based Copilot as a consumer is that Microsoft has created a way to make it portable to the work setting. By signing in your apps to your personal account alongside your work account, you can securely grant your work activities access to Copilot's help without you needing a business Microsoft 365 Copilot license and without sharing any data between your work and home accounts. This is perhaps the cleverest yet most hidden aspect of Microsoft's push for a consumer Microsoft 365 Copilot, and is something that can only work because of the app and data footprint Microsoft already has across enterprises. In my view, this is a starting point that is truly exciting. Imagine a Copilot at work that's granted access to your home calendar, or can review your personal emails for clashes based on information sent from your kid's school or without creating any data risk for you or your employer. From my perspective, it is in areas like this where Microsoft can most thoroughly demonstrate an advantage over OpenAI, and this type of experience integration should be at the top of what they are trying to deliver.
That said, despite some mixed signals about Copilot Pro as a kind of small business option, Microsoft 365 Premium is firmly a consumer plan. While I appreciate the added option to bring usage rights with you to work, I still believe the right approach for any business wanting to leverage Microsoft's technology is to start with an appropriate Microsoft 365 business or enterprise license, and then layer on either Microsoft 365 Copilot or pay-as-you-go AI services. A Microsoft 365 Premium license may be cheaper than these business-focused services, but the reality is this is because they are not built for business beyond a part-time side hustle, and even then a full M365 business account probably makes sense. Have you upgraded to Microsoft 365 Premium yet? Does this reignite your interest in Microsoft's consumer services? Or did that wane long ago when you opted for ChatGPT Plus over Copilot Pro? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks for watching through to the end. Until the next video, bye bye.